spoke at this event in Boca Raton yesterday, and this woman came up to me at the end of the event. She said, Dre, I think you need to work on your confidence a little bit. <laughs> Let's get into the Q&A. Dre all what up everybody, Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. Y'all know how this goes, you've seen this before. This is Q&A number 56. For those of you who don't know, and the refresher for those of you who have known how the Q&A works is I look through the questions and comments from the previous week's video, which is Q&A 55. I go through each one, I read the question, I respond to it right here on this video, and all my responses in this video will become the next Q&A, which is Q&A 56, what you're watching now. If you want to see me answer your question in Q&A 57 next week, you leave it in the comments to this video and then you watch next week and I'll get to it and we'll keep it going like that as long as y'all keep bringing me quality questions. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first question is from Jesse Wicks. It says, Dre, I'm loving your videos every day. They're a great inspiration to me. Well, thank you, Jesse. He says he's 14, he's six feet, one inches tall. He weighs about 180 pounds. When he's in the game, he plays power forward. He loves to play defense, but his coach wants him to... His coach gets angry, and he I guess his coach wants him to play offense. His coach gets angry at him because he loves to play defense. He says all his coaches focus on offense. He says his defense is better than his offense. But when he's at practice, he feels like he can hit tough layups, post moves, and jump shots. But in the game, he's not as confident. He doesn't have the confidence in his offensive game that he has when he's in practice. So do I have any tips on him keeping the focus and maintaining that level from, from practice and bringing that same level of offensive skill to the game or any vid videos on jumping and vertical and athleticism? Well, Jesse, first of all, I made a video about how to play basketball in games as good as you practice basketball. You need to go check that video out. I just made it about two weeks ago. It is on my channel. You need to go check that video out. You need to watch it. And if you're not on my, if you're not on the Dre All Day mailing list, the email list where I sent that video to everyone, then you need to get on it. You can get that through my website, DreAllDay.com. As far as the athleticism, jumping, and vertical vids, I have playlists for both athleticism. I got a playlist called athleticism, and I got a playlist called vertical jump. And I also have a program for overall basketball athleticism that is made specific, specifically for basketball players. It's called the Ultimate Athlete. That's available at hoophandbook.com. So Jesse, all your questions are answered right there. Tuna Sepitu says, Dre, I'm a good shooter and ball handler. I drive easily. My coach tells me to stop shooting, but I'm a 57% three-point shooter. He says, what should I do? Well, Tuna, that doesn't make any sense. If you're shooting 57% from three, I don't think your coach will tell you to stop shooting. So there must be some type of disconnect there. You got to give me a little bit more information. And he posted like three more comments all in a row, but I only do one question a piece, Tuna. So figure out what your best question is and ask me that one. The Prototype Man says, how do you improve your reaction time? I've been subscribed for a while. I don't know if you made a video on it. Can I let him know? He loves my videos. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, improving your reaction time is not something you'll learn by watching a video, Prototype Man. You actually will have to play basketball. Reaction means something happens which you don't expect, and then you react to it in the moment. It's not something you can think about. You can't study how to react better. It's something that you actually have to learn by doing. So you have to play in the games. The same thing that I told Jesse Wicks in the first question. You have to go check out the video about how to play in games as well as you practice because you can't practice react. You can practice reaction time, but it's not going to be the same thing you're reacting to when you get in the game that you were reacting to in practice. So it's something that you have to get through experience. It's not something you're going to be able to perfect in practice and then get in the game and just do it excellent because you've been doing it in practice because it doesn't really work that way. If it was that simple, then a lot of players that have a lot better reactions than they do in games. That's why getting good at basketball is not so easy. It's easy to think about and talk about. It's easy. It seems easy when you watch it and talk about it, but when you had to actually do it, it's a little bit more difficult than it appears because a lot of it, you have to go through the fire of not being good at it in live situations in order to get good at it. Next is Nice Sneak Satsy says, what's the biggest injury you've had while playing basketball? Luckily, I haven't had any big injuries, nothing worse than maybe knee tendonitis or something like that. So knock on wood, I've been lucky when it comes to injuries. J. Bell Sosa says, I'm a sophomore in high school and I play basketball. 
I don't even have any offers, not even nationally or state ranked. I'm wondering if it's too late to get D1 offers. Well, Jabel, you're a sophomore in high school. Why are you worried about offers? You don't need to worry about offers. You need to worry about doing something as a sophomore in high school. If you don't do something where you're at, then the offers won't matter because you won't even be playing college basketball if you don't prove that you can play high school basketball. So focus on where you're at. So you're talking about getting offers. You got two more years of high school to go. You're not even finished the second year of high school. So what are you doing in the spot that you're at right now? It's something that a lot of, if any of you listen to or read any type of personal development type of books in human psychology, a lot of times we as humans, not just young people, not just athletes, not just basketball, we get in a situation where we feel like we're not really doing our best or it's not working out the way we want to. And we start thinking about, OK, what's the next opportunity? What can I do to get to the next opportunity when the opportunity is the one that you got right now? The situation you're dealing with right now is what you need to focus on. So the reason, Jabel, I haven't seen you play, but you're saying you don't have any offers. I don't think sophomores necessarily need to have offers to be considered good. There are probably some really good sophomore high school players who don't have offers yet because, frankly, offers usually go, even if they come from high-ranked schools, a lot of the times they come to juniors, not sophomores. So if you would perform at a higher level where you're at, then you wouldn't need to worry about that because the attention that will be necessary for you to get those offers will come and find you. So focus on where you're at, perform at a high level in the situation that you're in, and then the situations that come in the future will be what you want them to be. So that's what you need to do. You don't need to focus on offers. You don't need to worry about playing D1. You don't need to worry about national or state rankings. You need to worry about doing something on the team you're on now. Whatever team that is, whatever pickup game you play in today, Focus on performing at your best there, and then tomorrow, perform your best tomorrow, and then the next day, perform your best that day, and eventually you'll be where you're at without even having to think about it. Next, air game 15. How can I get a softer touch around the basket? In practice, I make layups and runners easily, but in the game, when I drive and the help defense comes, I shoot it and it hits the backboard too strong and he misses shots. Exact same answer. Y'all need to see the video that says how to play in games as well as you practice. And I already see that I need to put an annotation for this so it'll be up here and there'll also be a link to that video in the video description below because obviously a lot of you have not seen that video yet so I'm going to make sure everybody sees it because everyone needs to understand that it's not so much about someone telling you how to do it or you watching a tutorial video or even something that you can practice. You have to get in the games and go through it and it's not going to be perfect at first. It's going to be some mess ups along the way, some setbacks along the way, and the difference between one player and the next is if you keep going despite the setbacks and the players who quit. Next, Dalton Lise says, what's your favorite shoe to play in? My favorite shoe to play in, number one all time, would probably be the Nike Shocks BB4s, aka the Vince Carters from back in the year 2000. Second would be the Hyperdunks, original Hyperdunk, and the third, probably the Jordan 13. Next, I am dumb, says Dre, for the move of the night series where you get the NBA footage. Thanks, keep them coming. Well, I just get it from NBA games. Next, Garrett Hill says, how do I get better at stealing the basketball? Stay between your man and the basket, keep your hands active, and play sound positional defense. When you do that, you'll get steals. The steals is more of an instinctive thing and is also more of a quote-unquote talent thing. Some people just have more talent for getting steals than others. So you can't really go into a game trying to get steals because what's going to happen? The majority of the time you go for a steal, if you go for a steal 10 times, you'll get it once, maybe twice, and the other eight or nine times, you're going to be completely out of position and put your teammates in a bad position and or give up a basket. And if you're playing for a team that has a coach, a coach with a trained eye is going to notice that and you're probably going to end up on the bench and you're playing in front of an audience. Anyone who understands the game is going to see that even though it looks like you're trying hard because you went and lunged for the steal, you're really just playing unsound defense. You're going to put your team in a bad position, especially someone who might be able to get you in a better position, i.e. a coach or a scout. They know when a player is lunging for a steal and it's bad defense. Going for a steal is not a technically sound move. It's something that happens when you play proper D. I know you see the highlights on TV where somebody gets a steal and they get a dunk and it's a big highlight, but 
What you don't see on TV is the other four times that game, that same guy went for a steal, didn't get it, and gave up a basket that wasn't a highlight. So those are the things that are going to get you yanked out of a game that nobody sees or talks about because most people don't understand the game at that level. But the people who will control your playing time, they do understand the game at that level. So the answer to your question is don't worry about getting steals. Play defense the way you're supposed to play defense. As long as you stay between your man and the basket, getting forcing a missed shot and getting the rebound is just as good as getting the steal because you end up with the end result of your team has the ball, right? And that's what you want. So focus on that. Finn Ali, Ali says, who do you think has the fastest crossover in the league right now? The fastest crossover? I don't know. I think that's something that could be measured in time, but... I don't know how to do that, who would do that, and nor does it even matter to me. All that matters, the reason that you do a crossover is to create space either to get a shot or to create a lane for a pass to a teammate. And all that matters on offense in the end is if the ball goes in the basket. So I'm not really concerned with who has the fastest crossover. TJ Hargrove says, Dre, what do I do if people tell me that I suck and I'll never be good? Should I take it in a negative way or a positive way? Well, TJ, is your brain we're talking about here, so you can't ask me or anyone else to tell you how you should take something that somebody else says to you. First of all, you don't have to take anything that anybody says in any way at all. You can completely ignore everything that anyone in the world says to you. There is no rule anywhere out there that says you must respond to something that someone else says to you. You have 100% choice on how to respond to everything anyone says, even to what I'm saying to you right now. Nobody says you have to take this any possible way. Nobody says you even have to listen to this. You could just completely ignore everything I'm saying to you and everything anyone else says to you. You choose. If you want to use it as a positive, that will help you get to where you want to go, then do so. If you want to use it as a negative, and that'll motivate you to get, to get you to where you want to go, you do that. The ultimate level, once you develop your mind to where you want it to be, as I tell people, is that anything that happens to you, no matter what it is, whether no matter how somebody else will see it as positive or negative, you are able to use that situation to to your benefit. We call that the is a called opportunism. Is a state of mind called opportunism that no matter what happens, you're able to use it to your advantage. If you look at some examples like 50 Cent, who's my favorite rapper, he got shot nine times, almost died. And he was able to turn that situation, which is one of the worst thing that could happen to a person aside from actually dying, is to get shot and not die, is that he was able to turn that situation into a positive. And that turned his whole life around, turned, made a rap career, made him into a, a super celebrity that he is now because he almost got shot. And name any person you know who has something happen to them worse than that. And they haven't reached his level of success. So he was like, he was able to manifest the ultimate level of opportunism, taking the negative and turning it into a positive. So somebody talking to you compared to somebody shooting you nine times, I'm sure you can understand that those don't even compare. So if he was able to turn that into a positive, imagine what you can do or imagine what you can ignore. If he could take getting shot and turn that to a positive and somebody's talking to you, you can completely ignore that. What is that to anybody? Somebody's just talking. People are going to talk for the rest of your life, no matter what you do in action. The funny thing is, the more successful you are, the more negative talk you're gonna have coming your way, or at least the person who sends it to you is going to be packaging their talk as negative, but you don't have to take it any way at all. Next question. Dylan Welch. So Dre, I'm 13, I play power forward. I just started playing this year and I'm not good at all. I can barely make a layup. How can I improve my ability? I can rebound and steal very well. I just need tips on shooting, layups, and dribbling with both hands. Okay, well, that's a lot of things you need tips on doing. And what you really need is not tips doing. What's also another thing you don't need is to be watching these videos. What you need to do is go to my channel and actually you need to take these videos. You probably got a phone that has a camera on it or a phone that watches videos probably doing. I'm guessing you do in 2015 take that to the park with you or to the gym or wherever you practice basketball and use the drills that i've already posted to work on those skills because i have covered every one of those skills in over 100 videos each and that's not 100 videos for all those skills i got 100 videos on shooting layups and dribbling with both hands so that's 300 videos right there and i got 4,000, excuse me 4,000 posted to this youtube channel and if you need a specific program that kind of tells you step by step what to do, 
Go to hoophandbook.com where I also have you covered there. So everything's already covered. Dylan, you don't need tips. You need to go start doing some work if you want to get better at the game. Watching the video is not going to do it for you. You got to actually go apply what you see and develop some skills, which comes from physical practice. Next is Mato Mateo Martin. Says, Dre, I want to, I'd like to ask you something. I'm 15, 5 foot 7. My mid-range shot, in my opinion, is decent. In his opinion, it's decent. The problem is his three-point shot. I can't reach the rim with shooting from three with his current mechanics. What can I do? By the way, he has the CP3 signature workout program from hoophandbook.com, and he likes it. Well, I'm glad you like that signature workout program, Mauro. Here's the thing with three-point shooting for you and all the other developing players who are having trouble making three-point jump shots. You can make closer in shots, but you're not making three-point shots. It's not about your mechanics. It's really about your strength. And shooting is a total body movement. It's not any one muscle that you need for shooting. And it's not necessarily about your mechanics. Because if you can shoot a 15-footer and make it, you can be, you'll be able to shoot a 25 footer but you just need to add the strength the total body strength and i have programs for that hoophandbook.com we had a position of power and we got the ultimate athlete which i've already mentioned the difference between the two position of power is strength training that actually uses weights and equipment so if you have access to a gym position of power is a strength training program and ultimate athlete is a 15-week program that requires no equipment at all so you can do it at home on your living room floor if you want to Position of power is 10 weeks, ultimate athlete 15 weeks. Both programs are specifically designed for basketball players. Next, Dimitri22100 says, I'm 5'11", junior, in high school, I weigh 170 pounds. I want to lose the fat off my body because I think it'll make me faster and more athletic. Do I know any way that he can lose this excess fat off his stomach and his chest? Yes, I do know a way. First of all, you're going to have to start burning more calories than you consume, which means you either need to eat less or you need to exercise more or you need to do a combination of both. And as far as the exercise program goes, Ultimate Athlete, which I mentioned five times already in this video. And as far as your nutrition, what you're putting in your body, I have a whole page on my website called Diet and Nutrition. If you go to my website, DreAllDay.com, click on the Guides and Tips page there excuse me, there's a section down there that says diet and nutrition. Click on that link. And there's a full page with everything you want to know about diet and nutrition as far as what, are you, what you're putting in your body so you're informed as to what it is and what effect it's having on you because it's not a one-size-fits-all thing when it comes to eating. We know that some people could eat a pizza and feel great and some people could eat a pizza and feel terrible and they gain 10 pounds three days later so you had to figure out how your body is responding to certain things the first step is to inform yourself and have the information so that you know what it is what effect it is having on you so then you can make smarter decisions when it comes to what you're putting in your body but overall is a combination of both what you eat and how you're using your body so once you fix both of those you'll lose that excess fat and shape your body the way you want it to be so that you can perform at a higher level which is overall your chief aim next d flash three says dre i'm on my high school team i average about seven points per game and about seven minutes of playing time i play a lot better and produce more than the person who starts over him but the coach doesn't play him what does he have to do to get more minutes d flash here's exactly what you do you go to your coach you say coach can i talk to you in private you go speak to the coach and you say coach what do I need to do to get more minutes? And whatever he says, you do that. And then you'll get more minutes. Next, Hein Harding says, Dre, I'm in high school. I'm usually a shooter, but I can't drive to the basket because I'm not aggressive enough. Is there a way for me to become more aggressive? Yes, there is a way for you to become more aggressive. And that is be more aggressive. It's like someone asking me, how do you be, how can you be happier? And I guess that's maybe not the best example. That'd be like some Tony Robbins stuff, how to get happier. But if you want to be more aggressive when it comes to driving to the basket, here's the funny thing. I actually have a video about it. So go to my channel and search. All you got to do is just search the word aggressive in my name. You'll see the video I made about how to be aggressive driving to the basket. Because it is a mentality, but it's also more of a habit. So you had to develop the habit. And if you've never done it before, you don't have the habit. So you had to consciously think about it at first. And then you'll start doing it without thinking about it. That's how a habit is developed. Next, Tyler Waffle says, 
Have you ever won a championship in high school and or pro? And have you ever made any kind of professional, have you ever made the playoffs when you were playing professional basketball? And he says about the verse one, whatever happened to that game? All right, so first of all, did I ever win a championship in high school? No, I did not win in high school. I only played one year of high school. If you don't know about my high school career, you can read my book, Buy a Game, which is at dreallday.com slash buy a game, B-U-Y-A-G-A-M-E. You can read that for free. You can also get it on Amazon if you want the physical book or the Kindle edition. In the pros, did we ever win a championship? No, never won a championship with the pros. And he says, what happened to the game with the verse one federation? We never made the game happen because I haven't been there and they never been to where I'm at. I'm in South Florida, they're in Texas. We've never physically been in the same place. So the game has not happened. We tried to make it happen a couple of different times with some Kickstarter campaigns. They weren't successful. So as of now, the game hasn't happened. Will it happen in the future? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Next, Connor 3X says Dre I enjoy these Q&A's keep it up thank you Connor he says he has a knee injury where he tore some cartilage and his doctor has told him not to run around for three weeks and even after that he'll have a limited ability to run or limited time to be running he's allowed to shoot free throws but are there any other skills that he can work on that don't require a lot of movement if so could I suggest some he's from Ireland all right well thank you Connor for the question shout out to people in Ireland well, Connor, you play basketball, so you're asking me what drills you can do that don't require a lot of movement. I think you would already know the answer to this question. Since you already play, you know what you can do that doesn't require a lot of movement. You know that you can dribble. You know that, already know that you can shoot free throws. So it's not like I have to reinvent the wheel to you and explain the game of basketball to you or explain the concept of practice to you. You already understand these things, and you have the torn cartilage in your knee this means you know what your physical limitations are. You know what you can and can't do based on, number one, what your doctor told you, and number two, you can feel your body. So you know what you can and can't as far as physically go and do. You've been practicing basketball probably for some time before that injury happened, that unfortunate injury happened to your knee. So based on what you know about basketball and what you know about your physical limitations, put those together and then do what you can do. So this is kind of a situation kind of where you're kind of asking me to think for you. You don't need me to think for you because you already had the ability to think for yourself. So my answer to you is put those two pieces of information together and then do what you know is left for you to be able to do. Andrew Wiggins. So this guy's name is Andrew Wiggins. Says, I've been practicing a fadeaway jumper. I consistently knock it down 80% of the times and I use it as a go-to move. Do I think that coaches would let him use it if he's capable of it? And also, he hates people who talk but don't show action. He just beat this kid who said he was better than him. He blocked this kid four times in a game. He scored 19 points and had all these stats on this guy. How do you consistently have the stats that he had? How does he, he wants to know how he can consistently have those stats. So the first question is, do I think coaches will let him shoot the fadeaway if he can make it consistently? Well, it's not about them letting you do it. It's not like if the game's going on and you shoot a fadeaway, they're going to run on the court and swatch a shot out of the air. They're gonna let, it's going to happen. So they don't have to let you shoot it. Either you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. Now, a coach might say, don't shoot it if he doesn't feel like it's a shot you can make. If you prove you can consistently make the shot, then nobody, the coach is not going to say anything. If that's your shot and you prove you can make it, as you said, at that 80% rate, then no coach is going to say anything if the shot's going in the basket. So your job is to go prove that. You said you can make it at 80%. Now your job is to go do it. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have to get permission from anybody before you start shooting it. Just do it. And if it's 80%, like you said, then everything will be fine. And then your sec his second question was, how do I be consistent? He said he had a good game against somebody. How can he do that every game? Just do it. It's kind of like the Nike thing. There's no, there's no special formula for me telling you how to have a great game every time. You work on your skills so that you actually have the tools to use. You play in the game so that you learn how to use those tools instinctively. And you play at a high level. You play hard. You put your full effort into the game. You bring the energy. 
and you play. You have a good performance and you keep having good performances. Eventually that becomes your standard. You live up to your standards, raise your standards if you need to, and you have the good games. It's not really as anything I can tell you that's going to make you have a great game every time. you got to go out there and actually do it. I can tell you anything, but what you do when you get on the court, that's completely up to you. Edmund Franklin says, Dre, I'm 6'10", and he plays for a school called Milwaukee Tech. It's a JUCO. He's, it's his second year of junior college. And he's thinking about skipping his junior year to go straight to play overseas basketball instead of college. He's 19. He will be 20 soon by the time the semester's up. What do I think? He says, do, do I think if he should stay till he's 22, i.e. play four years of college basketball, or should he leave early? Well, Edmund, I don't really have any information about you to tell you which one you should do. You just finished your, you're about to finish your second year of college ball, and you want to know if you should leave early or play all four years of college ball. Based on that, I have zero information, so I really can't answer your question. What are the other factors that are involved in this? And this is not even, and me asking you these things that I'm about to ask you is not really for me to answer the question. These are things that you need to consider so you can answer the question because it's your life. And I, I don't know if you really expect me to be the one to decide what you do with your life. I hope not because I'm not, I'm not that person. I won't decide what anybody does with their life, but me decide what I'm going to do with my life. So what you need to do is answer yourself these questions. What are the other factors involved? Is it money? Is it basketball? Is it family? Is it that you don't like school? Is it that you need to leave a certain school? Is that you're not getting into the school you want to get into? Is there something happening overseas in pro basketball that you feel like you need to be there now that's not going to be there two years from now? What are you considering down the line? Understand that by the time you're 40, let's say, you'll probably be done playing basketball. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life? And you need to factor that in because you will need to live another, let's say, 40 years after you're done with basketball. And you're going to need some value to bring to society aside from your ability to play because there's more to life than just playing basketball. You're going to have the whole second half of your life to live when you're done playing. And that's if you play till you're 40. So factor in all of those things aside from I just aside from what you want right now. Think about the future down the line. Put everything down on paper, not necessarily on paper, but factor everything in and then make a decision for your life. At this age, you're about to be 20 years old. You need to make all your decisions for yourself because in the end, whatever decisions are made, the only person who has to live with those choices are you. So if I was to tell you what to do and then it turns out to be the wrong thing, it has no effect on me because I don't have to live that life. You're the one who has to live it, so you're the one who needs to make the decision. Next question. GJI says, in your book, you talk about a guy named Brandon. Do I keep up with him, and who do I believe is the better player now? Yeah, I keep up with him. He's one of my best friends. Who's the better player now? I mean, he doesn't really play no more, so I'm the better player. Next question. Zach Levine. So we got all these NBA players, quote unquote, in the comments here. He says, he wants to ask something that has to do with school. Did I like math, math class growing up? If not, what did I do to become better at it and maintain my grades high enough to do better in quizzes? He says he studies enough, but he procrastinates. He leaves it to the last minute because math is boring. How do you get better on quizzes and tests and avoid procrastination? Or how do you excel in school? Well, Zach, there's a difference between avoiding procrastination and excelling because avoiding procrastination means you kind of like you want to get by and excelling means you have a high standard that you want to hit so you have two different questions you're asking there you need to figure out which one it is you want to do do you want to get by or do you want to be at a high level because excelling is not just avoiding procrastination it's doing a whole lot more than that as far as me in school i mean i took a there's math class in almost every grade you can take from kindergarten all the way up to your senior year of college. So I had some years where I was good at math, some years where I was okay. Once I got into college, I kind of did enough schoolwork to get by, and that was just me. And I'm not saying that any of you should follow that. At some points, I did enough work to get by. At some points, I did so much work that I excelled, but that kind of had to do with what I was focused on off the court, what I knew I was going to do after I got out of school, because I knew where I was headed once I got out of school. And of course, a lot of people think they know where they're going when they get out of school, then they get out and they get a rude awakening when they realize it's not as easy as they thought it was gonna be. So your question is, how do you get better at 
quizzes and tests and math. What you can do, Zach, since I am no scholar, I'm definitely not an educator when it comes to math classes. What you need to do is get, get yourself a tutor. So if you can go on YouTube and come to my videos, which is focused on basketball, you could probably find some videos on math. Now you can probably find a tutor that won't cost you much money, probably less than whatever you spend on your basketball gear. I'm assuming that you have some interest in basketball since you're here on this channel. Get yourself a tutor. Tell your parents or whoever you need to tell your teacher that you need some help with math class. Get the help that you need because if you don't do what you need to do in the classroom, that could derail everything you do in sports. It could derail everything you do in life. I know a lot of athletes who were better than me at basketball or some other sport who didn't make it anywhere because they never made it past the school level because they didn't take care of their schoolwork and not taking care of your schoolwork will keep you from being able to even play the sport so you can't show your talent and then you never get the opportunities and then 5 10 20 years go by your opportunities are gone and all you have to do is be a cautionary tale to the next generation is saying hey don't do what i did so you don't want to be that person and this doesn't you don't even have to be an athlete to mess up your opportunities when it comes to your talent so the number one thing you can do zach is get yourself a tutor if you need to excel at school i am not at all qualified to tell you how to excel at math courses in school next question kevin since 1993 he says what happened to the dre all day forums from about three four years ago he said he was an active member there one day when his account broke. He couldn't log in. He doesn't know why. He came back to create a new account. It was gone. He missed posting there and interacting with people with other, from other countries who love basketball. What happened to the forums? I don't know what forums you're talking about, Kevin. If you're talking about a specific website, tell me what website it was on, and then I could give you a better answer. But I never had a certain forum. I had different websites, but if you tell me what site, then maybe I could tell you what happened. But from what you're asking, I don't specifically know what it is you're referring to. Derek Rose, another NBA player in the Q&A. Derek Rose says, I keep mentally collapsing in basketball games. He turns the ball over because he gets nervous playing against new people, seeing fans in the stands and everything else. He asks, is it because he couldn't play all summer? No, he says, I don't know if he's asking me or telling me. He says, because he got depressed and couldn't play all summer because of an injury. He wasn't like this last year because he was always playing pickup ball and he was confident. Well, Derrick Rose, I can't really tell you why you're playing bad in the games. I get questions like this often when players tell me that they're having these problems in the games. Then they ask me why they're having the problems. If you're out there doing something, whether this be in the games, whether it be in practice, whether it be something that's not even sports related, if you are doing it, and you have no idea why you're doing it, how do you think anyone else is going to be able to tell you why you're doing it? You're the one that's taking these actions. You are the one, you're messing up in the games, you're having turnovers and not playing well. You know what you're doing wrong. Now, you might not want to admit it, you might not want to say it to me, or you might not want to face the facts with yourself or hold a mirror up to yourself, but you do know what the answer is. So the only way we'll be able to get you to point B, which is playing better, Derrick Rose, is for you to understand that you're at point A, which is whatever it is that's causing you to play bad. You need to come clean with yourself. And if you want to, you can subsequently come clean with me and I guess with everybody else in the comments who are going to hear me read your question about what it is you're doing wrong. But first of all, you got to get real with yourself and say, OK, this is what I'm doing wrong. This is why I'm messing up. But as long as you're denying whatever those facts are, I don't know what they are because, again, I'm not you. I'm not the one out there playing. I can't help you. So first, we got to figure out where you're at or well, you got to figure out where you're at. And then you got to decide what to do with that information. Karsten Ortswit. He says, Dre, I watched a video about playing in games like you play in practice. Recently, I want to know, should I start trying to do moves or take a bunch of shots or should I just keep playing and let it come to me over time? Well, Carson, you don't need to do either. You just need to practice your skills. When you practice your skills enough, when you get into a game, you are going to react instinctively based on the things that you've been practicing. So if you want to do a certain move in a game, that means you need to start practicing that move more when you're practicing. And then when you get in the game, you'll find yourself maybe one time using that move. Maybe you might have to consciously think about it. Maybe you might go into a game and say, all right, I need to try this move this time, one time in a game. And based on the response that happens, whether the move quote unquote works, 
doesn't work, whatever happens from you trying to move, then you can adjust. So you always will be making adjustments. There will never be any one way that you're like, all right, I'm perfect. I don't need to do anything else. Because of course you're going to play against different players. So the player that you scored 30 on is not going to be the same player the next day because he knows you scored 30. So he might, he's going to react differently. And of course you're going to play against different players. So you score 30 on this dude doesn't mean you're going to score 30 on the next guy. So there are always adjustments that you're going to be making. So I don't know why you would need to pick one or the other here, Carson. You can do kind of a combination of both letting the game come to you. I don't, well, you say it. He said, let it come to me. I don't know what it is. If you mean the game, if you mean the ball, if you mean the moves, the moves are not going to just come out of nowhere. The moves will come from you practicing. The game will come to you once you have the skills and you have the ability, the experience, which comes from practicing a lot and playing a lot where you know you're eventually going to get your opportunities in the game now if you're playing passively if that if that's your way of letting it come to you then nothing's going to happen you had to actually go and make something happen and again all this goes back to the skills you have because if you don't have any skills and you let the game come to you the game's going to come to you and you have no skills to react with the game's going to keep right on going so you got to make sure you develop the skills first in practice and of course i cover that in a few thousand videos here Muha Lizde says, what player would you build your franchise around? Steph Curry, James Harden, Klay Thompson, or Andrew Wiggins? It's a good question. If I had to pick one right now, build my franchise around, I probably would go with James Harden right now. Mun's Money says, Dre, I'm a senior on the basketball team. We called this player up from the junior team, and for some reason, this junior is starting over him. He's a senior. He feels like their skills are about equal, and we both work equally hard in practice, but the coach starts that guy over him. He says, what can he say to the coach to make him realize that he should be starting? Thanks and love the videos. Well, Munz, that's a bad question. You need to ask a better question. So your question is, what can you say to make the coach realize that you should be starting? Nothing. There's nothing you can say. You are not going to convince the coach that you're better than him by talking. What you need to say to the coach is, coach, what do I need to do to prove that I should be starting. Or you can ask the coach, why am I not starting? Or you can ask the coach, what can I do to get more playing time? Because maybe you might not be the starter. Maybe he just wants to start that guy. If y'all are equal and he's a junior, then I might start the junior because I know I'm going to have a junior next year as a senior and you're going to be gone next year. So why do I need to start you? If y'all are both equal, you need to be better than him. That would be my way of looking at it if I'm the coach. But again, I'm not the coach. Your coach might look at it a different way. So you're not going to be able to convince the coach. If you're a senior and he's the coach, you're not going to convince him of anything. All right, He's the coach, which means he probably assumes he knows more than you. And since you're playing for his team, even if you do know more than him, it doesn't matter because he's the coach. And his decisions are the ones that matter a lot more than yours do. So you need to ask the coach, if you talk to him, what can I do to get more playing time or to play more or to be a starter? That's what you need to do. Not what, not convincing him, but asking him. Don't tell him. Ask him, what can I do? Next, Ator Alberto. We got four questions to go. Ator says, what do I think about Damon Harge Jr.? If you don't know who he is, you should look him up when you have time. Well, I don't know who he is. Uh, I don't think anything about him, and I probably won't be looking him up either. <laughs> Next question. Alex Pinsinch says, Dre, what's your 40 time if you know it? By the way, love your vids. Keep it up. Thank you, Alex. I don't know what my 40 time is. I'm not a football player. There ain't no 40-yard dashes in basketball. Next question. Nate Dog 14 says, how do you know if an overseas basketball offer is good enough to take? Well, good enough is a relative term, Nate Dog. So good enough is all relative to the person who's saying it. So you'll know it's good enough if you think it's good enough. Next question. NBA General. Last question says, what do you think, do I think Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh can lead the Heat deep into the playoffs? They haven't done great, but they have experience. Well, a lot of players in basketball have experience. You need talent to win, and the Heat just isn't that good of a team. Bosh and Wade are great. I mean, Dwayne Wade's great when he plays. He just announced that he won't be playing for a few weeks, which I find that makes me curious how a player can just predict that they're going to miss a few weeks when the injury just happened. I would think if a player gets injured, they're going to say, okay, each day I'm going to see how I feel. Maybe I'll be back, maybe not. But a player predicting that I'm not going to play for two or three weeks kind of makes me curious if this player really wants to play that much, if this player is trying to pace themselves and take it easy. And that's fine. But if I'm playing for the Heat or I'm one of the Heat 
front office, I might be kind of frustrated with Dwayne Wade. Like, you are a franchise player. Do you want to play ball or do you want to rest? And he's predicting his injury to take him three weeks. That kind of baffled me a little bit. So I don't know what the Heat's going to do. Who knows that they're even going to be a playoff team by the time Dwayne Wade comes back. Because with just Wade or just Chris Bosh, the Heat is really not that good of a basketball team. And even with both of them together, the Heat are a middling team even so far this season. I wouldn't say it's because of Bosh and Wade. I think because of them, they're still afloat. But the team around them is just not that good of a basketball team. So you can see how much of a factor a guy like LeBron James is when you look at the situation of this team without LeBron James. But anyway, your question, deep in the playoffs, depends on what you consider deep in the playoffs because you got to win four rounds and win a title. So by deep, do you mean they win a round, win two rounds, win three rounds and make the finals? I don't think the Heat win any rounds in the playoffs. So I guess my answer to your question is no. Whatever you consider deep, that I guess that means winning a round. I don't think they win any rounds if they even make the playoffs. So the answer is no. They're not going anywhere. They're first round fodder, if that. That is it for the Q&A this week. Everyone, thank you for the questions. Make sure you check the vid description below for links to everything that I mentioned here. Also, the annotations. If you're watching this video on a computer, you'll be able to see the annotations. If you can't, everything's in the vid description below. Hoophandbook.com is where you get all your workout programs for every aspect of basketball. I'll cover it. Anything you can name that got to do with playing basketball is covered at Hoophandbook.com. Also, in 4,000 plus videos I have here on this channel. W-O-Y-G, workingyourgame.net is where you can get your gear. We've got the shirts, we got the hats, everything else, hoodies. I know it's cold in a lot of places that y'all at. I think that's it. You got any questions, I know where to find me. Tweet me, Dre All Day, Facebook slash Work On Your Game, Instagram at Dre Baldwin. Work On Your Game, <laughs> Dre All Day. Thanks hey, so for checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here and make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day.